Hi there, my name is Chris Haddad. I'm a senior machine learning solutions architect in AWS's global health division. Today, I'm going to walk you through how we can leverage generative AI on AWS in order to reduce that excessive documentation. The first thing that we see within our demo is a mock electronic health record system. So this is typically what a physician is going to see when they walk through the door. There are a lot of patients that they have to see. We're going to focus today on John Smith at the top. But keep in mind, as we're walking through this mock patient and clinician experience, the amount of uh, patients that a physician might have to see within a day, and then oftentimes the notes uh, have to be recorded at the end of the day. Initially, we can see that we can leverage AWS Health Lake, which is where we can store electronic health records in a standardized format in order to summarize all of our patients' notes over a long period of time. This is going to surface uh, insights that are critical that the physician can capture immediately so that they can get started with the patient without having to re review pages and pages worth of notes. When I hit begin, it's important that we ask the patient to be able to confirm that we're going to record. Let's do that. Right away, we can see Amazon Transcribe Medical, which has actually taken the audio from the room in an ambient way and creating text from it. I'm going to hit end recording, which for the sake of the demo is going to finish the patient clinician experience. Now we move to another service called AWS HealthScribe. AWS HealthScribe is doing two things. The first is persona identification. That's where we can see who the doctor is, who the patient is, and what each one of them said. From there, we can actually go to the insights. Here we're surfacing insights from the patient clinician experience that we just had. In order to in integrate generative AI and AI in general at point of care, we need to have a high degree of transparency and the ability to validate. So as I move my mouse and hover over each one of these insights, we can see where in the transcript this information came from so the physician can make sure that the tool is, is working in an accurate way. The next section we look at is going to leverage a service called Amazon Q Apps. Amazon Q Apps uses an architecture called Retrieval Augmented Generation. That's a two-step process. The first step in the process is an information retrieval process. That part of the process has been around for decades in machine learning. We then take those relevant excerpts of information and pass them to a large language model with specific instructions to answer the question using that data. Now, if that question can't be answered by that data, the large language model or generative AI model can say, I don't know. Now, I don't know might sound like a bad thing to get from a large language model, but the worst thing you can get is, I know, I'm confident I know, and I've completely made it up. So we can see that in play already as we're looking, as the generative AI model is looking through John Smith's allergies, and it doesn't find any allergies. And it says, there are no allergies for John Smith, which is correct. This information from the, uh, the mixture of retrieval augmented generation agents is then passed to another orchestra or symphony of expert agents from the American Diabetes Association, a nutritionist, ophthalmologist, and even a podiatrist where we can take a look at diabetic neuropathy or when somebody loses feeling in their feet. Again, we need a high degree of transparency and the ability to validate. So even though I'm taking this recommendation from the American Diabetes Association and all of these experts and putting it into the care plan, as a physician, I need to be able to earn trust in this AI tool so I can actually click on this particular expert and see those excerpts. Remember those excerpts that are coming from the information retrieval aspect of this. I can hover over each one of the citations to see the excerpts, but I can even go a step further and I can click on the source itself. And when I do that, the page that is being referenced from the American Diabetes Association opens up right there so the clinician has the ability to validate the source. Furthermore, we can actually use citations from the care plan itself in order to find out where this particular advice came from and again find where the excerpts came from by hovering over these citations and even find the references. There's one more critical step as we hit finalize plan which is that ultimately this tool is supposed to work alongside the clinician not in place of the clinician. So if the physician sees something that they don't like they can simply edit it, delete it, or they can add something if they need to, or they can completely delete the whole thing if they want and start from scratch. So ultimately, this works alongside the physician. 
Finally, when we hit approve and complete and OK, this information is then written back to AWS Health Lake. Thanks so much for joining me.